you feel this evening at Longview First Church. Better is one day the enemy has been defeated. You're in a church full of people that can respond and testify, I believe, that the enemy has been defeated. The enemy has been defeated. We are a victorious church. You are a victorious people. Can we just shout unto God right now? Come on, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the victory. We thank you, God. Amen. It feels good in the house of the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? We serve a great God. Amen. We serve a great God. I love what I feel. Glad to see you in the house of the Lord this evening. Love to be with the church family. Uh, it is Wednesday of spring break. And so if you look around and crowd is a little smaller than usual. It is Wednesday of spring break. Some of you are out there wishing you were on vacation right now. It's okay. I, I understand. But I do believe that God wants to do something tonight. I believe I have a word for you. I believe the Lord wants to minister. I give honor to Pastor for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I do not take it lightly. Amen. I'm honored and privileged. Uh, I just feel like God wants to do something tonight. Amen. I, I, Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter 50. I'm going to begin reading in verse 15. We're going to read through verse 22. Glad tonight to have my father in town. This goofy guy up here on the front row, that's my dad. I love him. I am who I am today because of his leadership and all that he's done in my life, so I'm glad that he's here. Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 22. If you have it, say amen. Amen. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will preventure hate us and will certainly requit us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespasses of thy brethren and their sin." For they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespasses of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God. But as for you, You thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now, therefore, fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. I want to take my title this evening from the end of verse 20, to save much people people alive. Would you help me pray? God, I'm asking you right now that for the remainder of this service that you would speak to someone. God, I don't want to say any more or any less than what you would want me to say, but I'm asking that you would anoint the lips of clay. 
I'm praying that you would speak to somebody. I'm praying that you would reach for someone. Lord, anything that would hinder what you want to do tonight, God, we bind it in the name of Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I pray that we would leave differently than the way that we came in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord and you may be seated. An angel speaking to Joseph concerning Mary in Matthew 1 and 21. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. You see, the angel speaking to Joseph concerning his wife to be Mary. That what would be conceived in her was of the Holy Ghost. And that what she, she would bring forth a son and that they would call his name Jesus for the sole purpose that he would save. That he would save his people from their sins. Jesus stood in the synagogue reading from the prophet Isaiah in Luke 4 and 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the, bl to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Jesus was declaring, this is why I am here. This is why I am here fulfilling what was declared. Jesus Christ is still about healing the broken hearts. Jesus Christ is still about preaching deliverance to the captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are Bruised. You see, Jesus is a Savior. Jesus, the Savior of the world, He came so that He could save. Luke 19 and 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was Lost. He was on in his earthly ministry, was so, uh, was so focused on saving those that were lost. Right. He came with a purpose. It didn't just happen by accident, but he had come to seek and to save right. that which was lost. And I'll say again, Jesus is still today seeking and saving. Maybe tonight... He's seeking for you. Maybe tonight He is looking to save you, whether it's your eternal salvation or maybe it's to save you from a broken heart or maybe it's to save you from some captivity or some bondage. But the reality is that Jesus is a Savior. There is nothing that He cannot save. There is nothing that He cannot deliver. No person He cannot find and no person he cannot save. He was put on the earth to seek and save that which was lost. Jesus, you, for those that know the Bible and study it, you know that Jesus taught many parables. He would teach parables or stories. And these stories would describe the works that he would do while he was on earth. And in turn... The works that we would do through him. Types and shadows of what we could do through him. Maybe you know the story of the Good Samaritan. Look, Luke chapter 10 verses 30 through 37. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves which stripped him of his remnant and wounded him and departed leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he had saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. 
But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. And he went to him and and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out of two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendeth more, when I come again, I will repay you. Now Jesus in verse 36, verse 36 says, Which now of these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. What we just read, we see a traveler who's stripped of his clothes, beaten by thieves, and he's left on the side of the road, half dead. We see two men pass by, a Levite and a certain priest, who refuse to stop and help that traveler. However, the Samaritan passed by, and he helped. He nursed him back to health. He gave oil and balm, gave him medicine to the wounds. He he restored him. And and Jesus, as he's telling this parable, turns to the people and asks who was most helpful. See, of course, they respond. It was the Samaritan. And he says, go and do thou likewise. Go and do thou likewise. You see, the question LFC is who are we going to be? Who are we going to be? Jesus sent his disciples out two by two to do exactly what he himself was commissioned to do, to save that which was lost. When Jesus ascended, he explained that we were to go and preach the gospel, that every nation must hear. It's about saving people. The church must never forget That we are in the soul saving business. I don't ever want it to be said of me or of the apostolic church. That we're so caught up in our world. And we're so caught up in the day to day duties. That when we see somebody that's hurting. When when we see somebody that needs to be restored. when, When we see somebody that needs to be saved. That. You know, that's somebody else's problem or, or I don't have time to handle it. I, I don't have time to teach them a Bible study. I, I don't have time to pray with them. I, I just need to keep going about my business. But no, uh, we are commissioned. Uh, if you're full of the Holy Ghost, uh, then you have been empowered to go uh, and to save, uh, to go and to restore. Uh, there are people uh, in Longview, Texas uh, that need somebody that will be like the Good Samaritan. Uh, I I'm not too busy for you. I'm not too preoccupied. If you need help, I'll help. Why? Because we're in the soul-saving business. That's why we exist. The church is not to be a country club for members only. But we exist as a hospital for the sick. We exist so that somebody that's broken, somebody that everybody else has forgotten about, somebody that everybody else has ignored, when they walk through the doors of LFC, they can meet a merciful Savior. And not only can they meet a merciful Savior, but I believe it's the will of God that they would meet a merciful church that'll be ready with arms wide open to say I don't have it all together and I've got responsibilities but we're in the soul saving business most important thing we can do we gotta spread we gotta go we gotta tell to save that which was lost I don't have to tell you that to the church, you know, but let me remind you again that soul, a soul will live forever somewhere. It will either be heaven or it will be hell. Despite what some religious, uh, religious teachers would teach, there is a hell. It is real. Just as real as heaven is, hell is real. And there are souls. It will go to live forever somewhere. But we have got to do what we can. 
We got to do what we can. And I'm not here. I'm not here to shame you into teaching a Bible study. I'm not here to shame you into going to Walmart and pass out flyers. That's not what I'm doing. But I want to pause for a moment on a Wednesday night of spring break to just challenge you in the Holy Ghost. We're still in the soul saving business. No matter how crazy the government has got, no matter how much calamity is in the world around us, we're still. In the soul saving business. We're still in the soul saving business. There's somebody that's depending on you. There's somebody that's depending on me. And can we save everybody? No. But I can save one. I can find somebody. I promise you, if you'll spend time praying, Lord, lead me to somebody. Lord, help me to help someone. Help me, Lord. Lead me. Guide me. Direct me. I don't want to just keep this to myself. Because I want to be like Jesus. It's easy to post on social media, I want to be like Jesus. And then when we read the word and it tells us what we got to do to do it, it can sometimes be a different story. (laughs) The point of my message tonight is not to talk to you about soul winning, but you got to remember we're in the soul saving business. Jesus cares and Jesus is a savior. Back to our passage text that we read opening. Joseph in this context is now the governor and he has provided a way for Egypt and all of the world to escape a great famine that has plagued their land. Verse 15, if you could put it on the screen, and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they say Joseph will pre-adventure hate us. You see, this, this indicates that Joseph's brothers, they are afraid. They are afraid. They're murmuring amongst themselves. You know, they see that the brother that they betrayed, the brother that they kicked out, the brother that they were so mean and awful to, he's now the governor. He now is in a place of power. He now is in a totally different place from when what they did to him. And you see, they're worried. They they just know down deep, Joseph will hate us. Joseph, he's going to call us to account for what we did he will certainly requit us all the evil which we did unto him they send a messenger to him in verse 16 uh, Joseph your father commanded that before before he died he commanded saying uh, that you should forgive us uh, they send a messenger to Joseph uh, you got to forgive your brothers but then they take it uh, a step further they take it a step further uh, because it says uh, that after his brethren also went they fell down before his face uh, verse 18 and they said behold We be thy servants. We be thy servants. You see, you see, they were dealing. They felt so guilty about what they had done. And I believe that it turned into a little bit of condemnation. It's not by accident that they use that word servant. Because you see, what condemnation does is it causes us to want to serve our way back to the good favor. What condemnation does is it wants us to feel like the only way to have forgiveness is that if we serve our way back to forgiveness. But that's, that, that is contrary to the Word of God. The Bible says uh, that we're saved by grace through faith. Uh, we cannot earn the mercy or the grace of God. Uh, you see, we'll never, Brother Joel Urshan has a quote that says, uh, you can never understand the efficiency of God's grace until you understand the deficiency of your flesh. Once we understand, Brother Long, that we cannot earn God's grace and His favor, we'll begin to serve Him out of a deep love and admiration that I know that no matter what I do, it won't be worthy, but yet you still loved me, yet you still forgave my sin, yet you still, it's the love, grace and favor, mercy of Jesus Christ. Joseph extends that love and that grace and that mercy to his brothers. Verse 20, 
Joseph, I'm sure, who, who is very emotional. I, I, I have nothing that could relate to that situation, but I'm sure Joseph, who's very emotional, uh, he, he, he says this uh, in verse, uh, verse number 19, And Joseph said unto him, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you thought evil against me. Joseph, emotional, look, I, I, I know I know that what you did, I know that it was in your plan. You didn't do it. You didn't sell me into slavery because I would be the next governor. You, you had evil plans against me. But I don't want you to worry about it because it was to bring to pass as it is this day, as it is this day to save much people alive. You see, when Joseph understood that as long as many people have been saved, and it doesn't really matter what happened, it doesn't really matter what you thought would happen, it doesn't really matter what you plan to do, because it all makes sense now. As it is this day, God used it to save much people alive. The Bible says... That when Joseph saw his brothers appearing, it was like the whole world was appearing before him. You see, Joseph, i got to give you a little bit of context. The reason, the reason why Joseph was elevated, and he was elevated and found himself in the position that he was in, it was because Joseph literally invented a system that saved the whole world. You see, for Joseph, it wasn't supposed to go this way. After a glorious arrival, Joseph had the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. His whole world was before him. Everything was planned out. It was going to be perfect. But he was utterly betrayed by his brothers. He was utterly betrayed by his brothers. You see, two years removed from interpreting the butler's dream, Pharaoh, Pharaoh has a dream. And Pharaoh, he's in charge of Egypt, and Pharaoh has this dream. And he can't find anybody that can interpret the dream for him. He has this dream, but, 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 but the butler says, I know a man. I, there, there, there was a man, his name is Joseph, and Pharaoh, uh, he can interpret your dream. He can interpret your dream. Stay with me. I'm not going to preach for very much longer. And so when Pharaoh has this dream, Pharaoh has this dream, and Joseph, he is able to interpret the dream. He begins to let Pharaoh know, listen, Listen, we're about to have seven years of abundance. We're about to have seven years and the favor and the grace of God is going to be poured out on Egypt. But we've got to be very careful. Listen, Pharaoh, we're going to have abundance. But listen, it's going to be followed by seven years of famine. And so during these seven years of abundance, we're not just going to spend all that we have, but what we're going to do is we're going to open up the storehouses. We're going to open up the storehouses, and we're going to begin to save, and we're going to begin to load up those storehouses. Everything that God blesses us with in these seven years, we're going we're to store up in the storehouses. And then there will be seven years of famine. We will be the place, Pharaoh, that saves the lost because we will open up the storehouse. I got to tell you, Longview First Church, we have got to be ready to open up our storehouse. We have got to be ready because when every other system in this world fails, the church cannot fail. When everything else falls into calamity and into chaos, the church cannot fail because the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Thank God they didn't lose their focus. Thank God in those seven years of abundance, they did what Joseph had told them to do. Sure enough, following the seven years of abundance, the famine came. There was death, there was fear, there was no food, and there were hungry souls who had no hope. But word got around and then the whole world heard that there was corn in Egypt. 
There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot of sin in our world, and, and, and we're in a crazy time. I, I found myself not wanting to turn on the news because I, I just get kind of depressed, and I don't really want to read about it. And, and, and I, know there's, I, know, I know where we're at, but I want to assure you, I want to assure you, if you think it's just going to magically go back to being great, that's not going to happen. As we get closer and closer and closer to the second, to, to Jesus Christ, making his return as we get closer and closer to the rapture of the church it's going to become more and more challenging but I've got good news for you there will be corn in Egypt the church will be well equipped you will be well equipped I believe we're going to be able to open up the storehouses we're going to be able to, we're going to be able to minister when nothing else will minister to them when nothing else will give them hope we will be able to do it. You let them laugh now. You let them persecute now. Let them say whatever they want right now. But I believe with all my heart. I know you probably get sick of young guys saying this. But our greatest hour has not yet come. The greatest outpouring of the Holy Ghost has not yet been poured out. But in these last days, I believe at Longview, there's some storehouses that we can open up. And when they come, we'll be ready. We'll pray them through to the Holy Ghost. We'll equip them. We'll teach them. We'll love them. We'll be there with them. Because we're here to save much people alive. We got to be ready for people to come from the north and the south, the east and the west. Because make no mistake, famine is coming. But they are coming. They are coming. They are coming. Prodigals are coming. I've got lost loved ones that I refuse to lose hope on. I believe they're going to come back to Egypt. Those brothers, the ones that meant evil against Joseph. It was those brothers that sold Joseph into slavery. And in slavery, he was falsely accused. While he was falsely accused, he was cast into prison. And while he was in prison, he was left there. He was forgotten. He was broken. There, he sees these brothers. They're coming back to him. And when Joseph saw those brothers, it brought it all back. I'm sure it brought the pit back. It brought all the circumstance. It brought all the trial back. You see, if you've ever been through something, it's something you know the Lord will use it for good, but yet uh, when that comes back into your mind, uh, it doesn't separate uh, or it doesn't cause you to get emotional. Uh, you can still remember what it felt like. I'm sure Joseph can remember uh, what it felt like to be without water. Uh, I'm sure Joseph in that moment when he saw his brothers, he could feel uh, exactly uh, back to that moment uh, when he didn't understand why his brothers would ever be doing what they were doing to him. You see, Joseph... Uh, the Bible says he had to leave their presence and just weep. He just wept. He had been through something that was just so hard and so difficult. But Joseph, and this is the point, this is the point of my message. I hope it makes sense and I hope it ministers to somebody in the house as Joseph is grappling with those emotions and, and he begins to sort through it all and, and, and Joseph begins to look back over his life and he sorts through what's happened. Joseph just couldn't get away from the fact that a lot of people have been saved. If I would have never been sold into slavery, they would have never been saved. If I would have never been thrown into the pit, then these people would have never been saved. If I would have never been falsely accused, then these people would have never been saved. If I would have never been left, 
in a lonely prison. So you know what? You know what, brothers? I know you meant it for evil. And it hadn't been an easy road. And it hadn't been an easy journey. But it's all right. Because to save much people is the end goal. Whatever I had to go through. Whatever I had to endure. If it was to save much people alive. Then to God be the glory. To God be the glory. I knew you meant evil. But it, if it was to save much people alive. And it was worth it. It was worth it. If you had to do that to me in order for me to get to the place in life. And all these people were saved because of it. Then it was worth it. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight, but I know you don't like everything that you've been through. But like the apostle and the musicians can come. I, I know you don't like everything you've been through, but, but the apostle Paul said it like this. To the weak, I became weak. You see, Paul, make no mistake, Paul did not enjoy. Paul did not enjoy when God made him weak. But God made him so weak so that he would be so weak that even the weakest person would be able to relate to what he was going through because he to the weak had become weak to the weak I became weak to the strong I became strong the Bible Paul said it like this I became all things to all men you see that doesn't mean that he he was trying to fit into a whole bunch of environments and he was trying to be a man that wore just a whole bunch of different hats. But, but what that means when Paul says I became all things to all men is that it meant that God had allowed him to experience life in such a way and across such a broad spectrum that by the time he got to the point in his life he would be able to minister. He would be able to relate to anybody who needed to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. You've been broken. Paul, you've been broken. Paul was saying, I've been broken. You've been bit by a snake. I've been bit by a snake. You've been persecuted. I've been persecuted. You've been shipwrecked. I've been shipwrecked. You've been thrown into prison. I've been thrown into prison. You've received stripes. I've received stripes. I became all things to all men that by all means I might say so. If you look around, there's a lot of people that need to be saved. There's a lot of people that need to be saved. That's why God let you go through what you went through. Oh, that's why God allowed you to experience life in the way that you've experienced. Maybe somebody's been looking. Somebody's just been looking for something to hold on to. Something to make sense of what's going on in your world right now. And I want to tell you whether it's in two days, two weeks, two years, or 20 years. I believe that the Lord can use it to help save somebody. If somebody's looking, why? You know what? You need to stand and say, Lord, if you can use it to save much people alive, Lord, if you can use it, then I give it to you. If it saves much people alive, then absolutely. Was it worth it that my brothers betrayed me? If it saved much people alive, then absolutely. Can we stand together?
Joseph just looked back. I know, brothers. I know. I know you meant evil against me. I know you had other plans, but God used it to save much people alive. God used it to save much people alive. I'm not trying to stall tonight. Oh, I just feel the Holy Ghost in the house. Oh, shataya Oh, I believe in the Holy Ghost that some people tonight, you're going to be able to release some pain. You're going to be able to release some brokenness that you've never been able to. And it's going to be through the realization. It's going to be through a made up mind that Lord, if you'll use it to save much people alive, then God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I uh, You don't have to wait on me tonight. You respond however you feel. Oh, was it worth it if it saves much people alive? What the enemy meant to destroy. What the enemy meant of evil. The Lord can use it to save much people alive. When it's all said and done, I look around and I'm not even going to be upset about it because God will use it to, to save much people alive. Oh, someone be sensitive to the Holy Ghost right now. I know it's Wednesday night. I know this is different. Oh, but someone, hear me today. Hear me today. God is not against you. God is for you. God is for you. It's going to be the glory of God revealed. It's going to be a blessing. It may not feel like a blessing. It may not feel like it, but the Lord is going to use it. Oh, shut somebody's still holding back right now somebody's still holding back right now come on release it release the pain release it Lord use it to save much people alive God it doesn't feel good it doesn't make sense 